Welcome to the podcast of MotorWeek, television's original automotive magazine. MotorWeek is made possible by TireRack.com and by RockAuto.com. Here's your MotorWeek podcast host, John Davis. Hello and welcome to podcast number 140. And I'm not sure why we number these. Is it... We should name each one. Yeah. All right. Like yeah. a and like an episodic. Does anyone have a yeah. favorite number? Like number seventy two? Was that one really? Epic? I've always been partial to twenty eight yeah, for no specific for reason. Anyway, that's not important. What is important <laughs> is your host John Davis is not here. So uh, we got the B guy. team. We got the B team in charge, and he's uh, John's away getting some much needed vacation from us. So, uh, I'm Brian Robinson. Around me, uh, around the table here, is Road Test producer Ben Davis. No relation. <laughs> I need to keep stressing. His able-bodied and freakishly tall assistant, Greg Carlos. <laughs> yeah, that, that's me. Our writer and uh, voice of American Youth, Patrick Lucas. All right. Okay, Greg's younger and than me, but all right, whatever. Our FYI reporter, Lauren Moore. <laughs> yes, that's me. So, uh, before we get into the usual boring uh, road test car discussions, why don't you uh, tell us, Lauren, what's new in the FYI department? Well, let's see. Just got back from Indianapolis, where they've got this program, uh, electric car sharing program. It's the largest in the country. It's called Blue Indy. It's really cool. Um, you know, if you're rolling up to Indianapolis, if you're you know, on vacation, business, you can just rent these little electric cars that they have all throughout the city, a really a green way. And if you don't want to rent a car the whole time you're there, you can just uh, rent this car to get you from, hey, the hotel to the airport. It's really cool. Unique little uh, program, first in the in the country. Like, how many cars do they have? There's um, over 100 cars. Mm-hmm. They have over 100 cars. And by the end of 2016, they want to have over 500 cars. So, um there's, there's plenty for everybody if you're heading out that way. There's plenty of charging stations. When we were there, I tested it out, drove it. Really cool little car. Plenty for everybody. Um, didn't have any problems with accessibility. Is well, it all... Uh, go ahead. No, no, no. Well, I mean, it's not <laughs> about it me. all... Uh, like city infrastructure charging systems, or do they have yeah. their own? Yeah, so you really, so that's the thing. You really have to stay within the city limits of Indianapolis. They really don't want you to go farther than that. They've got about a 120-mile range on a full charge, so it's really unique just to get you around the city. I mean, if you really wanted to head out, there's really no infrastructure outside mm-hmm. of the city, so everything's pretty much centrally located. Um, that's cool. What cars are they? They're, it's unique to Blue Indy, but they're designed, Pina Farina, I believe is cool. the name. Yeah, so oh, Ferrari, sweet. yeah. That's awesome. Um, so it's a unique design. You won't see it anywhere else. They have... Um, Did not know that. Yeah, Auto Leave in Paris is kind of where they got the idea. Um, so they're driving around Paris, and then here we have them in Indianapolis now, too. Pina Farina designed those one-touch Coke machines that you see everywhere now. That's, yeah, that's exactly. what somebody was saying. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So Why do they call it Blue Indy instead of Green Indy? I, you know, I, 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 I don't know why. I should have had. I should yeah. have asked about the whole blue aspect. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. Actually, I was kind of just. I just didn't really know what it was until you had actually explained it, and then I'm wondering why is it yeah. just green? Cause I don't know. Yeah, because it is a very green way of getting around. Are no, they all I, one color? Are they all blue? They're all they. They're all white, and they have like blue stripes on them. That's so you cool. can definitely. They're. I mean, I think Greg, you could probably fit in the driver's seat. They're a tiny car. But you could probably do it. Let me chalk that yeah. up as the first height reference. I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I would call it Triple Lindy. So it's basically a bike sharing program for people that are too lazy to bike. Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Or kind of like um, like zip cars, something like that. But if you really wanted to go green and be environmentally friendly, these are all electric. Is there like so. a mileage and sometimes it rains limit? and sometimes it's cold. <laughs> That's why I kind of wonder, you know, yeah, yeah if you well, don't yeah. want to. Is there a mileage limit? No, driving the car. No, I mean it's until you run out of battery. No, I mean you have to obviously recharge <laughs> you just, it. You'd have to, you have to. You can only go 120 miles. Yeah. Yeah. and then just walk away. It's not your problem. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no, you can drive it for days. You can drive it for you know minutes. Uh, we drove it probably eight hours, but you're charged by the minute that the car's on. So I mean, I wonder what the whoa. shortest trip yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. has been in one of those. Like if somebody just went to like the corner, the other corner, and grabbed <laughs> the coffee and back. It's possible. They've got to, it. Yeah, they've yeah. got to have some kind of record there. It's all done through your smartphone, I assume. Yeah. You could, there's stands that you can just walk up to. Say you're really interested and you don't think about it until you get to Indianapolis. You can just walk up to it. Or if you know you're going to the city, you can reserve everything on your phone. So it's either way, it's, it's 
convenient That's for everybody. Crazy. Do they have like, yeah. like some Sounds kind of cool. cab fare meter so you know, keep track of your minutes and stuff? It's like text you like every uh, so often, like, hey, you still in the car? Because we're still charging you. <laughs> 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 you better not be checking this tag, <laughs> so, um, it'll And it'll text you like, hey, this is your total amount. And it just charges your credit card. So there's really no transaction of. Jeez. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, what a sad. world we live in. I know. It does sound cool. Look forward to seeing it. Yeah. And then I actually went to D.C. And that's also happened in the FYI world. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. There's 25% of cars on the road right now have open safety recalls on them. And just, so a lot of people, just. I know, get that's, your recalls fixed. Yeah, we had um, our long-term Sorrento we've had for less than a year, and it had four recalls on it yeah. when yeah. I took it in. And so the government has, it's called safercar.gov, super easy to find out if your car does have an open recall on it, super easy to get it fixed, just take it to the dealership. But just something that a lot of people don't think about it or a lot of people just ignore, safer which I'm is... A, I bet you you're I actually use that on it. Yeah. My yeah. sucker's yeah. got at least two that I know. <laughs> Yeah, so get them fixed. Take them to the dealership. Well, it's I know they want to do it because they dial the rev limiter back. They oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, 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 yeah, yeah where yeah. the Celica was breathing too heavy, so they had to dial it back. Yeah. So he's I got, got one of the ones that's I probably have touched. the only one on the road that yeah, still revs. <laughs> like, so I'm hoping that'll be worth money when I try to sell it. You have to find a fuel filler door at some point. They did that with that. I saw that. that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good. That accurate CL, that 280 horsepower Acura CL, remember when that hit? Like, oh, uh-huh. four, three or four, and they dialed it way back yeah, in horsepower. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's get into uh, so more. John would never let it get that off topic. Yeah, yeah. I'm really yeah. in. You can really get it, get it, get it. Let me mark one hit against John, too. One hit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on to some road test cars. Mini John Cooper Works hardtop. What is it, and <clears throat> do we want one? Patrick, you speak for the youth of America. There you go. You're the uh, younger I staffer. Yeah. I, actually, I, uh, I would never, ever buy one. You love European it's... cars. <laughs> <laughs> I drive an Audi. Um... No, it's thirty-two grand, wasn't it? Sounds about right. That was crazy, <laughs> which is way too much money, but it was a lot of fun. I was surprised at how much actual fun. I oh, I took it out on the track because I thought, you know, I'm not a good track driver, and so I I took like the least powerful car we had there, and I had a ton of fun in it. But um, yeah, I've never really been a fan of minis in general. Their whole quirky for the sake of being quirky thing even I, if you were you'd I probably really have a, owned one by now would you really want to buy another one that really hasn't yeah, exactly. evolved that exactly, much yeah. inside it's, now. it's the most thing. powerful mini ever that says something right i mean does it what if you <laughs> had the most powerful mini before how much more powerful is it than the previous most powerful mini ever uh, well, it's, it's, I mean, it's only the, like 228 horsepower. The JCW, it like, it's always been the most powerful Mini. Yeah. This just happens to be, you know. The latest JCW. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought... Um, yeah, on track. I mean, Roving is a big track. That's a small car. What were your opinion on that? I thought it was okay. If you go in there with the uh, idea of just having fun and you don't really try to push it too hard it is a lot of fun because it's like a go-kart i mean the handle the steering is just so quick and it's so responsive there's a lot of understeer it's a front wheel drive car it's not that fast but again don't go in there thinking you're getting a performance car just go in say you're gonna have a lot of fun it'd be it's much more at home on a a uh, autocross course yeah we've all, I've, I've seen them kill up there on autocross courses they just crush mm-hmm. the only thing that can touch them it seems is uh corvettes hmm. so you like it no, I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm just saying it's not. I agree with Greg well, in that it's an autocross well, car, not a truck. So to put it in the sport mode, it was like a, uh, a like a fob. Oh, well, that yeah. was like race mode of sport mode. Right. Yeah. Like yeah, is, that a, yeah. is that a production thing? Like that what was, was that about? I thought that was yeah. just a weird way. You would think they'd love to like find another way or a reason to have a toggle down there. Yeah. But for this, they decide nope. We're going to be mini. We're going to be quirky again. I know. It felt Let's, cool, uh, but then, like, you think about it, and you're like, what if I don't have this key fob, like, on so my key ring? I can't, I'm locked out of track mode or whatever, forever. I, I just didn't understand. Well, you'd be locked out of the car, too, if you didn't have the key fob. <laughs> I'm just talking about that part of the key fob. Oh, it was a right. separate thing. And who would want to carry that around? You got your key fob, oh, and then yeah, you've yeah. got this little, yeah, this thing that's, like, this big, if you look watching on the camera. <laughs> and it's literally just, <laughs> the sole purpose is to put it into track mode. So you're only going to drive that car to Starbucks anyway, man. So would anyone take it over GTI? Probably no. not. No, 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 no way. Okay. All right. Well, that's something. Okay. <laughs> but still a great car. But they're quirky. Right. In case you haven't heard. Next up, <laughs> Chevy Camaro SS, which I feel we've talked a lot about already. But uh, let's do it some more. Who's on the track? Um, SS? Yeah, it was... Um, I, I probably drove it the most out of, out of everybody. This is my first time in an SS. And... Um, Really, really good on the track. 
the the chassis is just I think phenomenal. I think it's a very good track car, and especially for it's not even we're not even into the Z01 jet or the uh, the Z28s. I mean, this is just a Camaro SS. It did extremely well. The grip is phenomenal, and there's just power all over the place with that engine. So I thought it was great. It's went and put power all over the place. Just put it everywhere. <laughs> just all over the place. <laughs> How about you, Ben? What were your opinion? Uh, yeah, I mean. I, this generation Camaro, I'm impressed with the chassis. I'm impressed with um, everything I've seen so far. But, you know, I've always got a mark a little negative in the column for just not much of a styling change outwards. Inside, a little bit better, but I was expecting more. Uh, and just outside, it's just it just looks too much like the outgoing gen to me. Pretty, but They did make it look exactly like the previous gen. They did. They went a super long way with everything else, but it would have been nice to hold back a year maybe and just bring it all the way so what is a mid-cycle refresher we're going to be stuck with this body style for quite a while right i would and think it's, so it's yeah, a little dated it already yeah well, so obviously everyone would compare it to the mustang so i would say compare to a mustang gt which we've kind of talked about before already but yeah, yeah. well i mean i don't know I, th- I th- again i think it drives better than a mustang it's more sophisticated than a mustang but Kind of like Ben says, and I think we talked about this not too long ago. Yeah. I'm just now remembering. It's like, it's all coming back would, I, would I buy it? I don't know. I mean. That Mustang's got I, a yeah, lot of still, feels. Right. A lot of good feels. I'm still drawn to a Mustang and actually just coming out of a Challenger, which, if I can add, for we had a we have a Scat Pack Challenger in right now. That's like 41 grand. That's a steal, in my opinion. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I'd still think I'd go a, a Mustang just because. Like kind of Ben said, more a little bit more emotion to it, and it's just looks yeah, better. Yeah, Camaro SS is like four grand over a Mustang GT too. I think something like that. It's, I mean, yeah, the real the real cool challenges are going to be when the one LE comes out and sure, stuff like yeah. that. Something we can really put grudge match against the Shelby. Like What's would, uh, be cool stuff? Cool. Sorry to interrupt. Um, it's never an interruption, Patrick. Right. It's called discussion. Okay, here we go. I'm discussing. Um, what interior do you like better, new Camaro or Stingray. Camaro or Stingray? Wow. Yeah. Just yeah. dramatic Chevy re- I think remakes it's inside. exactly the same. It's, really? they've, it's, it's they extremely the Stingray inspired. I, well, they're, but from the outgoing Stingray, or, or the outgoing Corvette, Corvette, I should say, to this Stingray, the, the, the transformation was dramatic. I just think this Camaro interior is probably the best Chevy interior I've seen. Whoa, that's a bold statement. Uh, I don't agree with that at all. Really? What's, what's better? <laughs> the Corvette? The Corvette? I don't know. I didn't really think the interior was that great. I mean, really? the materials are nicer. It's still incredibly uh, I like the plastic intensive. And it looks it's better. so hard to see out of. So it doesn't matter what no, you're looking for. That's from. just inherent Camaro. But I, I, I see where you're going because this interior is similar to the one that's in the Malibu, the new Malibu. Which well, I, I, was, I didn't even like the new Malibu really? much. I didn't think that was that impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Everything, this one I did. The, I mean, as far as infotainment goes, everything's really uh, easy to use where a lot of things. I mean, for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll get into that with the next car. You'll hear me rant on the uh, no. infotainment. Uh, uh, okay, but GM's we'll, really yeah. nailing it as far as that goes. Uh, any, any, do you want to drop in anything here? Are you a Mustang or a Camaro girl? I would go Mustang. Oh, look at nice. that. Nice. 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 All right, so keeping it in the GM family, how about the Cadillac XT5, Ben? I'm yeah, fresh off that trip. It's, um, fresh. It's... It, it's a it's a nice car. It's very smooth and quiet. They have an all new three point six liter in it. And it's a car, or is it a crossover? It's an SUV. Did I okay. call it a car? You did, but that's all right. I just want to make sure everyone knows. <laughs> um, in a segment where it seems a lot of people are offering turbo fours with a little more performance snap to them, it's it, I, I found it strange that this vehicle only has one motor, a three point six V six, and it's whisper quiet, and the shifts are super smooth. It's almost so quiet that after being in it for four hours, I was going mad. It was just so sterile and quiet. Alone with your own thoughts, does that yeah. too? Yeah. Especially That's coming out of the Lincoln yeah. that we had, the MKX uh-huh. with the EcoBoost two three. That had nice. some snap and growl to it, and some some blow off whoosh and all that. And that that's completely missing in this Cadillac. So I'm confused where Cadillac's going. I mean. Exactly, they're hand, trying they to have, portray a more sporty image, right? Yeah, but then yeah. they, exactly. I mean, everything, you can get a lot of these models, performance that you're never going to use, just unreal performance, Corvette parts and stuff. 
And then on this XC5, all you can get is this whisper quiet old man's car. Yeah. Where are they going? I'm what, not do sure. have, what do you have against old men? In? I was going to say, old men might like, uh, <laughs> might like these cars. <laughs> Maybe, old men but... still buy cars. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, so they're chasing down all these BMW Audi people with this, you know, mystical American performance with, you know, European match performance. But then there's are, just no performance in this XT5. Are they, well, are, are they going to put all that stuff from the CT6 <clears> in there? Did they ever mention Or was that before the CT6 you went on this trip? Uh, CT6 trip was before this trip. Okay. Uh, the CT6 was there. I got a chance to look at right, it. Right, but so are they going to put like all that fancy tech? Because the, the CT6 is like all you know how they're fancy like, all luxury, flagship, right? Though. Yeah, that's like, fancy oh. tech. Wow, yeah, that might be a the, mid-cycle refresh. PR is pretty hush hush about that yeah, kind of stuff. Um, it's a nice car. It's quiet. It's super comfortable. Uh, in, I got to give it to them inside as well. Uh, well, the Q system's there, so you can only give it to them so far. That's still a nightmare to deal with. If you're going on a long haul trip with a friend, you better set aside 30 minutes to teach them how to use yeah. it, so but, you don't have to. But luckily, the they're wheel. on board with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So once you, I mean, if you have an Android or an Apple, you plug in. That's what you're using. You're not messing with that Q system for the most part. I mean, other than that, still the, the haptic feedback, which is pretty awful. Fair enough. Fair enough. But uh, use of materials and um, color palettes and, and textures, everything is above what I thought was expecting so kudos there uh exterior wise i thought it was a little too familiar of a of a body style uh, i look like a a larger captiva <laughs> to and me it, this vehicle replaces the srx correct yeah right uh, it does yeah and they'll have like more coming like xt7 eventually to well that uh has that been finalized or is it going to be I don't, That's I just conjecture. I haven't heard a uh, official yeah. official word on that. Uh, Speculate. I just made it up then. <laughs> Speculate. So, uh, but if there were to be one, it would be an XT7, I guess, because that's the whole passenger. naming scheme. Or an XT3, maybe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Make yeah. a mini one. Think cool. about it. All right, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, we'll it. Figure it out. A, yeah. <laughs> to sum up, a nice vehicle, but there are more higher performance uh, choices out there for the shopper. Great summary. There it is. I'll there do this. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our lightning round. Tesla, let's discuss the fanfare. Over 300,000 pre-orders for the Model 3 before people have even seen it up close. Conventional vehicles that sell this well or better, i.e. Camry Accord F-150. F-150. No. <laughs> F-150, <laughs> sorry. Never get this kind of attention and following. Why does Tesla get it? Why does Tesla get it, Start or why time. does Tesla get it? All right, hold on, stop. Uh, like, why does, I've why does screwed Tesla things up already. It? Sorry, folks. Why? Yeah. I Okay. Uh, I came up with this. So why <laughs> Why does... So you have the answer sheet? Is that what you're yeah, why exactly. does Tesla get the fanfare? Yeah, That's the question. <laughs> yes. So why does Tesla get this like kind of like fanboy kind of following? Like why an, was like there so iPhone? much buzz around it? Yeah, yeah exactly. When like it's still iPhone. a year away, Because they're more of a tech company than a car company at this point. That's how a lot of people who aren't... Um, necessarily car people view them i think right. they um and there there's that certain elon musk is a very good promoter he's a very good marketer he's a smart guy and uh you kind of see the similarities with apple where he gives his products like an emotion you know uh a cord camry f-150 is like utilitarian and you know you buy it because it's dependable tesla's all about you know we're cutting edge. It's an emotional car and things like that. So that's what he gets a lot of the younger people interested in, in his product. That's yeah, my I, opinion. I feel like cars like the F one fifty have like entire commercials based upon the fact that like this is like your work truck and like work is life and stuff like that. So they try to develop like an, an image and like an emotion for their cars and buyers. And I feel like Tesla doesn't even advertise at all. So we'll, how where are well, they cultivating? Does this? That, I mean it's also. The, the demand aspect of it. Anybody can go out and buy an F-150 mm -hmm. right yeah, now, and that comes out. This is like, you don't have a chance. I mean, if, you're, if you want to buy a Tesla Model 3, you've got to get your money in now. And that's kind of the, like the competition part of it. And, the, and realistically, the people who are going to buy them are people who are very, very well off. So, I mean, I don't know. I, just, I think it's because it's more of a, uh, like a tech thing. Yeah, and I found it weird that a lot thing. of people, or not a lot of people, but I read enough things where it was you like... You can jump in any time, Brian. I'm just the moderator here. <laughs> it was like people who like pre-ordered the Model 3 already owned a Model S. 
and they just wanted right. another. What were, the, did they, were there numbers on that? On how? What were the percentage of people? I, I don't know about that, but I I read enough stories where like. Yeah, like, or they interview like man on the street who pre-ordered his Model Three, and he's like, "Yeah, we love our Model S," and we thought, "Yeah, let's just get another one." Like people just buy <laughs> keep cars. it out of the hands yeah. of people who yeah, really yeah, want exactly. the car. Yeah. People just buy cars like that. Just like a dinghy to tow behind their. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah. models. laughs> they really are well. I mean, the the consumers are well off. I think I who guess, are getting yeah. their hands on Teslas. But I agree, it's because they're a tech company. It's I think that's where any friends, family that I know that are into Teslas follow Elon Musk. I mean, they're all about the tech aspect. It's not. It's not for the love of the car, I don't think. I don't think part of it was this what everyone's been waiting for, the 200-mile range, yeah. yep. $30,000 uh, electric car. Uh, meanwhile, you can go out and get a Bolt pretty I was about to say, it's like a Chevy no. Bolt going to get 300,000 pre-orders and stuff like that. Or are people going to be lining the up outside people of the showroom? actually get the three. <laughs> Only if you, you pre-order 250,000 of them. All right. All right. So how about that? Sometimes it just times out just right. See mm-hmm. you later. All right, now let's talk about a viewer question. Harold from Parts Unknown. Hi, Harold. I didn't know we had a video for you. Yes. Am, wa- uh, am I wasting my time and money listening to this podcast? No. Uh, <laughs> it's free. Use, so, using no. gas additives that claim to clean the fuel injectors and get better gas mileage. The only ones I have been using are the brand name products. I really can't tell if they are working or not. What do you think? We have no fuel additive sponsors right now, do we? No, so, uh, none. I say it's a tremendous waste of money then. <laughs> Would that answer be different? Right. Yeah, yeah. I imagine this question wouldn't be on the sheet if we had I mean, I would tend to agree. I mean, I'm sure there's studies out there where some work in some capacity, but I would you, say for the general. Go ahead. I was saying, are you saying that none of them work? Are you saying that he's wasting his time and money with brand name products? Uh, did he say what kind of car he's putting them into? He did not. No. Or what kind of performance? Yeah, if it's like a performance I think car. anything with fuel injection, you're not going to notice anything. I mean, I think you'd have to jump back into the carbureted era to maybe have some gummed up jets that might get cleaned out and leaned out. But I don't think I don't think you're going to notice anything today on I mean, modern stuff. If it's peace of mind you're looking for, then a couple bucks is, a, I guess, a cheap price to a pay. A couple bucks in my pocket's always giving me more peace of mind. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you get what you pay for, right? Whatever you want to do. (laughs) If you're paying like two bucks for it, do you really think it's going to make a difference? Uh, uh, You know, buy an air freshener for two dollars. That makes a difference. A more noticeable noticeable difference. uh, Maybe it's like uh, I'm sure there are there's definitely chemicals out there that make a difference, but I don't think we as a consumer can buy any of them over the counter. Does that make sense? That does make sense. I get it. Which kinds are out there? That we can't buy. Well, you have BG chemicals that Pat talks a lot about mm-hmm. in, in the Goss shop, and I believe you can only get those uh, at certified shops that, dist- that disperse those things. And those are some serious machines that pump that stuff into your car. Um, I don't think anything you buy in a can will give you similar results. Hmm. All right. It's a bunch of snake oil. There you go, Harold. <laughs> Save your money. Uh, all right. I guess before we wrap up, does anyone have a rant and or rave? For our, uh, I have a rant. Nice. <laughs> I was thinking I didn't want it to be yeah. good. Yeah. I had nothing. Yeah. All right. Reputation. So I'm buying some Honda parts a couple weeks ago. For a? For a CRV. All right. What year? As a first 97 gen. First gen, yeah. CRV, yeah. and I'm buying sway bar links. Now, you would think, because it's a genuine Honda part, <clears throat> that the price would be the same every Honda dealership you go to. But I found the part at, the, at a Honda dealership just 20 minutes down the road, 20 bucks cheaper than it was up here in the Owings Mills area. What's up with that? Dealerships are, I mean, I guess when you up cut there. it back down, they're businesses. But I guess I thought, because one familiar name's on the building, that the parts would be the same price anywhere you go. But that's not the case. Rant over. Well, <laughs> that is strange. I mean, the, I guess they just assume that nobody shops around and says, "Yeah, who would?" Yeah, I guess. I mean, the only reason I shopped around is because they only had one of them twenty miles down the road, and I needed two. Hmm. How is that even? Why would they allow them to do that? Eggs. That's that's my questioning there. Max, aren't you going on a Honda event? I hope Honda's bring listening to right now. Yeah, bring it up to. Let me get to the bottom of this. What do you think? Is that maybe fair? they just have some spare parts around. You That's drive. not fair, right? I mean, I would think by the would same be... by the same by the same token, though, do you think uh, consumers believe that they can get the same exact Honda cheaper somewhere else at a different dealership? 
Well, I'm sure they I mean, can. you shop cars yeah. around us. Yeah. Yeah. But parts shouldn't be negotiable. They should well, be the same across the board, right? I mean, I can see different regions, maybe. Well, yeah, but it's just not like you go to Best Buy and you're like, I found a memory card at Best Buy down the road that's yeah. 10 bucks uh-huh. cheaper. Maybe on the West Coast, I'd expect maybe different pricing. but I think the bigger minutes. question would be, then when you take your car in for service, are you getting charged more for parts there Oh-hoo. than you would be at another Honda dealership? Yeah, that's... I think. Somebody needs to do a story on that's that. That's disconcerting. That sounds that sounds like, like an FYI. Yeah, that sounds like a consumer-related like, story. I can bad get we don't that. have a consumer-related reporter <laughs> somewhere around the state of Oregon. All right, we'll get on that. That was kind of a lame rant. Is that just me? Or? I'm going to need pretty uh, – uh, not too much gets me rough, man. That's all I had. Into a yeah. fruitful Yeah, it was a very small yes. – and then it turned into a more general complaint. Right. So And as spring has arrived, I feel like that was a great metaphor and a great way to close – Podcast one. <laughs> Why don't you guys just switch right. To sum up, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, we'll thank our podcast producer, Patrick Lucas, for wrapping things up and for uh, bringing this to you, and for Jim Bigwood, our audio engineer, for helping uh, me sound somewhat legible, and Bob Mixter, our podcast creator, and everyone else on the Motor Week uh, staff bringing you the show week in and week out. Check us out all the usual places, and... Uh, Don't worry, John Davis will be back next time. (laughs) You have been listening to the podcast of Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine. Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com and by RockAuto.com. For additional information on podcasts, videos, and showtimes, visit our website at MotorWeek.org. And watch Motor Week, television's longest-running automotive magazine series, each week on your local PBS station. (laughs) 